Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. I have all three of the kids today and we're gonna be making Pinewood Derby cars. This is a simple, quick project that you can make with almost any basic tools in the world. So I wanted to actually talk through the process of how we make them. If, if you just wanna see the quick video of making these, I'll leave a link to that, it's on the main channel. But let's dive in and make some cars. Pinewood Derby cars actually hold a very warm place in my heart as it was the first woodworking project that I actually did myself for my Cub Scouts troop. And so it's kind of fun to be able to do this again with my kids. Now I sat down with them at the computer and showed them a bunch of different shapes and what other cars look like and said, you know, what do you want your car to look like? And the first thing that JJ said is, which one's the fastest? And I said, well, this shape is the fastest. It's just a, basically a thin piece. And as soon as JJ picked his car, Melody and Arthur wanted the exact same thing because they wanted the fastest car. So that's why all the cars are basically because of the same shape. They're all about a quarter inch tall. And so the first thing we have to do is rip them down to a quarter inch. We'll do that with a, uh, we'll, we'll start by using a marking gauge to draw a line a quarter inch in. And then we can let them cut down. Now for kids, I find that using a Japanese style saw is a lot easier. It's very easy to pull, it's very easy to start, and it tracks right down a line. Uh, because no matter how much wiggle room you have on your side, it takes a lot to move it off that line. So it's a lot easier just to set up for the kids and let them go to town. And let them cut for a while, and uh, if, I, if I tell them, you've got to cut this yourself, um, it ends up taking them probably about 10 to 15 minutes to make this cut, which gives me a little bit of quiet time. But for some of them, like Arthur, uh, he can't quite do it, so I help him out and uh, finish his up. Most of them, I start it, show them the body mechanics, and then let them go to town. And before you know it, theirs is cut apart and ready to start planing down. Usually they're not perfect. As with anyone's first cut, uh, there's always something to be cleaned up. And so once we crack them apart, we can bring them over and clean them up with a spoke shave. Uh, excuse me, a plane. Smoothing them down and getting rid of the rough surface. To do that, I find it easy just to clamp them to the bench top as it removes um, any wiggle room around and it makes it easier for the kids rather than trying to do it freehand. For this, I went back and forth between the number four and the number three. The number three is easier for them to hold. However, um, sometimes they don't have enough strength to push it through there. Melody kind of does, Arthur does not. So I have to go to a number four so I can hold onto it with them and help them out. And anytime that they have a problem with it, I'll just show them the body mechanic and then let them try it on their own until they get the, the handle of it down. Uh, JJ was really not liking this step, and so I was doing a lot of the work with him, but he ended up doing a fairly good job at the end once he got the hang of it. Next thing we want to do is taper the nose down so that it has an airfoil, and so we're going to be planing that down. I clamp it in the vise at an angle, and this allows us to just use the plane and keep on going until we get it down to a bull nose in the front. We're also going to be rounding over the back, but uh, first we have to uh, give the front a sharp nose on it. So you can see how it's clamped in the vise at an angle, and then we can start planing it down until we come to a sharp point at the front. And this is just a repetitive thing. I could do it a little while with them and then hand it to them and let them go at it, and then eventually I'll have to come back and help them out a little more. Uh, it ended up taking Melody five or six minutes to do it. Um, Arthur, because I was doing it, it was really only about 30 seconds or so until it was planed all the way down. But they all like this step. Now the spoke shave is a great tool to give the to give the kids because it works really well with most any hand, and as long as it's sharp and well tuned up, the kids can do it pretty quickly and easily. Uh, even Arthur was able to do some of it on his own um, toward the end, but we'll see that a little later. So on the back, we're just going to round it over, put it at a slight angle, and this gets to teach them a little bit about wood grain and how to move the the, the knife across it so we're not going to be tearing out. We don't want it to go straight across. We don't want it to go down. We want to skew it at an angle. And it was a, a kind of a cool opportunity to show them that. We also want to round over the nose, and so I had the card that I made a while ago as a template, and they could use that to draw a line, and then use the spoke shape to cut down to their line. And so I would do the first little bit with them, get them close, and then they could actually do the rest of it by hand. And so it was kind of a, a fun time for them to actually experience it and be able to take control and say, I did that. Even Arthur um, got to do a little bit by himself once he kind of got the, the, the feel of it down. And it was, uh, you can start to see the smile come out a little bit here. <laughs> but uh, getting to, to actually play with them in the shop and, and set, start to see the realization of how the tools are used and proper way of holding them and the, the way they function and the way they cut and the way they're supposed to feel 
every now and then just giving them these projects gives them a long stride towards getting it done. Now JJ went to town. He had a lot of fun with this. Um, this spoke shave is now his favorite tool and I'll often find them over at his bench um, just whittling down a board and making it much smaller. <laughs> Um, and yes, I do let them use my tools as long as I'm in the shop to oversee, they get to see it. Then we went through and chamfered the corners just a little bit to ease them over. And so I could let them use the block plane and I hold it in place as it needs to be rotated. I don't want their fingers underneath the blade. Once that's done, then we can start on the painting job. Uh, and I was really hoping that they could do the spray paint on it, but none of them had the finger strength to hold the button down. It's just one of those things. I got to let them play with it a little bit, um, but they just weren't able to hold it down, so I had to do the, the painting for them. They each had their own style, gold, pink, and, and striped. And Melody actually wanted to make hers a pink crayon. As you can see, it's kind of like, looks like a crayon. We need now need to add the weights, and we're going to be adding these tungsten weights. They are extremely heavy, and uh, they add a lot of force to it. They're actually uh, an ounce and a half a piece, and the, the car bodies themselves are only... Uh, I think the car bodies are like three ounces right now. So I'll start by marking off where the holes need to be drilled and then we can drill the hole through and then glue them in place. I'm not going to actually drill all the way through, just to down most of the way until there's a little bit of space left at the bottom for the weight to sit on. That way it's easier to glue in and easier for them to work with. And I'll hold the top in place and let them crank the brace. And sometimes they have enough force to do it and sometimes they don't. Uh, Arthur did until the, uh, the augers started to engage and then he couldn't do it anymore. Next thing is adding a little bit of epoxy. We want to let that fill in and uh, I had to do this for them because I didn't want them getting epoxy over everything in the bench. And then we can set the weights in and let them do their trick. Next up it is time for the wheels and uh, the kids got to pound in all their own wheels. Uh, this took longer than I wanted to and I had to learn a little bit of patience because they just don't have the force but it was a good chance for them to learn how to swing and pound. We also bent the front axles a little bit so that the wheels would be tipped in on the front, tipped out on the back. Um, it allows them to ride along a little bit better. Then we can judge their weight, add a little bit more. We had some tungsten putty that we were able to push into the corners and uh, work them until they were exactly five ounces each. And then we got to check them again. Each of the cars then were individually spaced out and it was kind of surprising that they, they're all the exact same shape but they all used a slightly different amounts. Uh, but it was a good way to, exp to explain energy and you want to have as much energy as you can at the back of the car so it has farther down the track and store it up. And then we went and tested them all. Um, I, we made these ones so that they were rail running as opposed to running straight down the track so I wanted them to veer ever so slightly to the, uh, the right. So we tested on the board, made sure everything was right, and then we could take them to the races. And this is kind of fun where the kids finally got to see their cars in action and, uh, and play with them. And especially Arthur, he had me ride his down the rail for probably a good 15, 20 minutes. We probably did it 50, 60 times until he was satisfied that it was running exactly the way he wanted it. <laughs> And here you can see uh, the cars coming down. We have JJ on the left and Arthur in the middle. JJ just beat him out. And then Melody is coming down. Uh, hers is on the far right. Whee! And the results are in. All three of them won first place in their own den. JJ won first place over all the pack. Melody got third and Arthur got fourth. All three of them are going on to the regional trials. And that'll be in April. So we got a lot of fun ahead of us. So there you have it, a quick project you can do with the kids that is rather fun and then they get to experiment and see whose is faster. <laughs> We're going to go take these off to the races and actually find out whose are faster. <laughs> I think that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day. I'm family car. Pink crayon. Good Rick! Yeah, it's that exciting.